In this tutorial, we're going to take the golf award that we created in a previous example and create the tool pass to be able to cut this out on your CNC. To start off this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and load in the golf award that we created before. So we're going to open existing file. We're going to navigate over to our V10 tutorials, golf award and golf award files, and we're going to find our golf award 3D assembly .crv file in there. And we can just simply click open. And once the file opens up, we should probably tile our views vertically. So that way we can see both the 2D view and the 3D view. Now the strategy that we're going to use for this requires us to have a vector to isolate our tooling. Because this award is in a dish shape, we could essentially cut this into the top of an already created plaque or maybe even a cupboard door, a cabinet to display golf awards in. And to do that, we need to actually isolate our tooling to only cut what's inside of the actual dish. So there's a couple of different ways we can do that. But in this particular demo, what we're going to do is we're going to find out the diameter of this dish and then we're going to go ahead and create a vector to fit that. So if we select that dish and we go over to the set selected object size, we're going to see that it's actually 7.5 inches round. So if we close that and we go to our draw a circle tool and we click that, what we can do is we can set the center point to 0, 0 which will be right in the middle of our job and we're going to make this 7.5 and we're going to create that. Oh, we should probably go ahead and change that to be diameter. Change that back to 7.5. And we're going to create that and then close. And you'll see that now we have a vector circle there that's exactly 7.5 inches across. And that's great. So let's just go over to our tooling tab. So we're going to click that and we're going to pin that down. And just so that we don't, we can see all of our 3D view, we're just going to go ahead and reset our arrangement here of our views and again we can see on our left the 2d view and on our right the 3d view and let's look straight down on that now as always when we're going to cut something we should always check our material setup first so we'll try that we'll click there and the thickness of our material is a half inch so that's right we're going to start cutting in the center of our job which is good in this case because we're going to be able to actually center that right in the middle of our plaque and we can start right there it'll make it for easy application now if we do if you're more comfortable with the bottom left then go ahead and select that and you'll see that the icon will change to the bottom left but we're going to go ahead and leave that to the center we're going to zero off the top of our material and this is important because this is actually machined into the surface of our material and hopefully our material is pretty flat on the top we're not going to create a gap because again it should be right in the surface of our material and our rapid z gaps we're going to change these to be a clearance of a quarter inch so it's going to move up from the surface of our material a quarter inch and hopefully that'll avoid any hold downs we have maybe any screws that are holding down our material and we're going to make it go up to a quarter inch above our surface before we plunge in now our home start position is at zero, zero, and the gap above that, we're gonna change that to be a quarter inch, which is pretty standard, and we're gonna click OK. Now our first tool path we're gonna to create is gonna be our 3D roughing tool path. So we'll click that button. We don't have a tool selected, so let's select a tool. And we're gonna be looking for our half, I will go with a quarter inch end mill. That would be great. We're gonna select that. We're going to use selected vector, not our model boundary or material boundary. That way we can use that circle that we created earlier. We're not going to have any boundary offset. We don't want our tool to rise outside of that dish at all. We want it to stay inside that dish. We're going to leave a bit of an allowance behind and 0.04 of an inch is perfect. We're going to do Z level roughing. Again, we could use 3D rastering if we would like, but in this case, I think we'd benefit from the Z level roughing. It won't take as long. And the cutter we're going to use to do our finishing is going to be pretty pretty strong so we'll be okay with that we're going to raster along our x we don't need to reverse any direction there's no need for any ramp plunge moves we're going to change our name of our tool path to 3d roughing dash 0.25 end mill that way we'll remember what we used and we're going to go ahead and calculate that 
And as always, we should preview our visible toolpath. And if it doesn't look right, then we can go ahead now and make our changes before we run it on our machine. And that's exactly what I expected happening. You can see how it pocketed down and took out the majority of the material before we go in and do our finishing pass, which is great. Let's close that. The next thing we're going to do is go in and do our 3D finishing toolpath. We're going to select a brand new tool. In this case, we're going to use a ball nose end mill. A 1 8 inch would be perfect. We're going to select that. And now temporarily for this particular toolpath, I want to edit that tool. And I would like to change our step over down to be 8%. That's going to give us the best detail that we can with this particular cutter. And that way we'll get a good idea of whether or not we need to uh, come up with a different strategy for getting the detail that we're going to miss. Or we might see some other things that might be wrong. We'll select OK. And we don't need a boundary offset again. We're going to use a offset machining. So we're going to start in the middle and we're going to slowly work our way out to the edge of our circle. We could use a raster, but that would end up potentially leaving some marks that we don't want to see. So let's just go with the offset. And we're going to use a climb. The cut direction will be climb. So it's going to start from the center and work its way out. Uh, if we happen to see some radial lines that are appearing in our finished piece because our tool is dragging a bit as it moves to the next line of code, the next circle, then we could use a step over retract. But for this, we're not going to use that, but that might help with that. What happens is it will do one line of code or one circle, and then it will lift up the tool, move out a bit, drop back down again to your next line. And that way you will you have a less chance of seeing those radial lines happening. And we're going to change this to 3D finishing and we'll change our tool to uh, 0.125 ball nose end mill. That's great. We'll calculate that. Now, because we're using such a small cutter, it's going to take a few minutes for our software to actually um, calculate that tooling. And there we have it. So let's preview that tool path and take a look at it. Now, as always, once you get done previewing your toolpath, you should take a really close look at it and make sure it's exactly what you expect to have happen. So let's just maximize our 3D view and have a look around this. Now, that looks pretty good. The only thing I think that we could make a little bit better would be this cusping that we see along here where our 1 8 inch ball nose is leaving a bit of a cusp there at the base of all of these elements. Now, you could get rid of this with a little bit of sanding or depending on the material you're using, it might not really matter. But in my case, I think I'd like to see if I can get that a bit better. So let's close that down. Let's go back into that 3D finishing pass. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select a brand new tool. But in this case, the tool doesn't exist. So we're going to put a new tool in our ball nose group. And it's going to be a tapered ball nose. So let's select the ball nose group. And we're going to add a new tool to that. And we're going to change the type to be a tapered ball nose. It's in inches. And we're going to change our diameter to be 0.25, a quarter inch. Our side angle is going to be 3 degrees. And our tip radius is going to be 1 32nd. So we're going to get our software to do the math for us. If we put in 1 divided by 32 and then press the equal sign on our keyboard, it will give us that number for us. And then we're going to say we have two flutes on this. And then we need to create our settings. We're going to take a look at our cutting parameters. And we're going to see that our pass depth is uh, fine. Oh, this is great. We're going to change this to be 7%. Our clearance pass step over will make that 7% as well. And this all looks fine. These numbers are a bit conservative. So depending on the material you're cutting into in the machine that you have, you might want to adjust these slightly. We'll click Apply. And we're going to select that, and that'll be moved over into our toolpath. We're going to use selected vector again. So to make sure that we have the proper vector selected, we'll retile our views, and it's still selected over there. That looks fine. No boundary offset. We're going to use our offset tooling again, and we're just going to change this number to be 0 0.032. And we're going to call this TAP. Almost end mill. There we go. We'll calculate that. Now again, we're using a smaller tool again, so we need to remember that it's going to take a little bit longer to calculate. There are other things that you can do to 
help to optimize your tooling. This is kind of the sort of the standard way of doing it, but there are other things that you can do, including rest machining um, and using vector boundaries. But in this case, this will do the job to demonstrate this process. Let's preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see that when we zoom in, that now it's super clean along the edges and that looks really great. So a lot less handwork to do, probably no handwork at all, and we're gonna get a really nice result. But the trade-off is more time on the machine. So you'll have to figure out what the balance is gonna be for your particular job. Let's close that down. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add on our text to our actual ribbon. And that's gonna be using a V-carve toolpath. So we're gonna select our text in our 2D view and then we're going to add a V-carve toolpath. We're going to start at zero at the top of our material. And we're going to select the tool. So we're going to select our 60 degree V-bit. And we're going to assume that these settings are all okay. We're going to select that. We're not going to use a clearance tool. We're not going to worry about any of these settings down here, but we are going to worry about this one right here, which is project the tool path on to the 3D model. That's important because right now, if we cut it the way it was, if this ribbon happens to slide off into the distance or towards the back of our model, then the V-carving would get lighter as it went back. Or if the, the ribbon got closer to us, the V-carving would, would get deeper. So if we project that onto our 3D model, it's going to follow that surface perfectly. We're going to name this. V carving and 60 DEG. We're going to calculate that. Then we can preview that visible toolpath. And that's exactly what I hoped would happen. It follows that ribbon perfectly. And it's the right depth that I like, and everything looks really good. Now, as always, you need to save off your tooling when you're all done. So we can just click Save Tool Paths. If you happen to have a tool changer, then you can save off your tool paths appropriate to that particular tool changer. If not, you can bundle up your tool paths if you'd like. But in this case, there are three different cutters. So we have to save off three different tool paths. Make sure you choose your right post processor and then save off those tool paths somewhere so you can find them. Now, like most of our jobs, once you're done everything you need to do, you should save that off somewhere where you can find it. So if you have to go back and adjust any of your tooling, maybe your actual font, you might need to change later. We just go up to File, Save As, and we can save this right back into the same folder. Instead of calling it Assembly, we can call it Toolpaths. We can save that off. And there we go. Well, I hope you found that useful.